So, please. Thank you very much, Christina. Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Miroslav Bolzer. I'm with the International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges. It's a UN accredited civil society organization, and uh, we are delighted to be the co organizers, the organ main organizers of this society event here at the UN MENA Climate Week in Dubai. And uh, the topic of the side event is digital innovation for an inclusive UNFCCC process uh, with the uh, subtitle United Citizens Organization for Action for Climate Empowerment uh, launcher. So uh, a brief introduction now the pointer is having some problems. Next slide please. Okay, we will work with next slide please then. Okay. No, it's still not working. Now it's working, yeah. Okay, we have it. So, uh, the challenge is really in light of the extreme climate crisis that we get all hands on deck, uh, really, getting all of society engaged, uh, and many people are concerned. Uh, is feeling there's something wrong, they go on the street, but actually, in terms of uh, taking action and having an impact on reducing the climate risks and uh, improving the quality of our atmosphere, reducing emissions, people don't know exactly what to do. They, are, they need an empowerment uh, system, an empowering ecosystem. And uh, we have the United Nations uh, as a global mechanism for intergovernmental coordination, but uh, what is lacking is um, the support structure for non-state actors. Uh, we are not functioning as a global community. We don't know who is doing what for, uh, for the climate and we don't have the right incentive mechanisms. And here, uh, digital innovation is a key uh, enabler of transformative change to get to impactful action uh, and uh, uh, incentive mechanisms for everyone. 
And within the UNFCCC process, the program, somehow the, the portal and the interface between the intergovernmental space and uh, the rest of uh, society is the Action for Climate Empowerment program. And uh, in this area, uh, we are now in a time where things are opening up. Uh, governments understand that they need more non-state actors engagement and uh, Austrian Ministry for Climate has been a leader in this field to innovate the space and they have uh, financed the Action for Climate Empowerment Innovation Project ACE 18 in partnership with the UN Climate Change Secretary as lead partner and my organization as associated partner together with ICLE and ECOS. And uh, in this program we had the task to, um, to develop a concept and uh, solutions for non-state actors uh, engagement and uh, resource mobilization in this field. And here is our solution. It is the Glotcher United Citizens Organization for Action for Climate Empowerment, a, a blockchain technology based quasi international organization for all of society engagement in climate action and resource uh, mobilization innovation. We have announced it in November last year in Glasgow at the UN Climate Change uh, Conference COP26. And there we also said uh, by the MENA Climate Week we will come up with a draft white paper. We will present uh, our initial ideas about how the governance structure can look like, how the uh, resource mobilization mechanisms look like, and uh, we have a, a unique network as one of, as our uh, key technology partner for blockchain solutions, NFTs uh, primarily, and we have Cointelegraph as our media partner, and uh, we're working on this with several UN uh, partners as well. Uh, UN Habitat uh, Youth Program was uh, our partner, is our partner for Digital Art for Climate, which we will hear later about this. So, um, in general, the Glotcher is a decentralized ecosystem empowering multi stakeholder collaboration on climate and uh, other SDGs. Uh, yeah, but, uh, the, it's built on three pillars. One is culture, one is technology, and one is institutional, organizational innovation. And uh, here is a graph, and I have to express my gratitude uh, to Romy Sumaria, uh, who is our team member in the UK, who helped us to strategize and uh, structure our thinking about the UCO and how the different components uh, of our institutional ecosystem function together. IAI is this uh, civil society organization accredited to the UN. Glotcher is the broader ecosystem with uh, uh, representation also. The plan is to have it in every city, every local community. There should be a Glotcher center providing uh, this enabling space and ecosystem, bringing technology, knowledge, funding, to especially youth uh, to uh, be able to contribute to global goals, climate action. And then uh, this links then up to the metaverse with the United Citizens Organization, DAO. And uh, this structure will then have uh, a climate action marketplace, uh, digital art for climate marketplace as well, but uh, also uh, an instrument for creative community engagement, fundraising, uh, good life management uh, support and education and capacity building. So uh, it's uh, set up, it's planned as a DAO and uh, we uh, are convinced that the DAO structure, decentralized autonomous organization has uh, great potentials to innovate uh, our uh, cooperation we can create communities on local and global level. We can uh, mobilize resources, pool resources, create give and get relations and uh, collaborative governance, which was unimaginable without the blockchain technology. It provides also transparency, efficiency, autonomy, anonymity where it's needed. And uh, this uh, UCO structure is designed in a way that it really delivers all on these uh, six elements of ACE, Action for Climate Empowerment, which are education, training, uh, public awareness, public participation, public access to information, international collaboration. 
I will not go into too much detail, but Carolyn will also say then a few words what uh, ACE, Action for Climate Empowerment, means in the concrete context of Kenya. And uh, functionality, uh, it's uh, still in the making, but uh, key elements is uh, digital identity management and global citizen accreditation. We have here the UNFCCC process, uh, this observer organization's accreditation. It's uh, quite uh, demanding and uh, those who don't have this institu institutional vehicles uh, for linking up with the UNFCCC process, they are not part of this global effort uh, to implement Paris Agreement and we will uh, uh, provide uh, uh, accreditation uh, and uh, reputation management and all this for the individuals and also other non-state actors. Collaborative decision making is a function UN SDG action certification so that because uh, the key element for a global community to function is that we trust one another that if I say I've done this for the climate that uh, there's a mechanism which verifies it uh, certifies it uh, that it's registered and everything and this is a systemic necessity which is not existing yet and uh, with the United Cities Organization DAO we plan to do this Education is a key element. There's no societal progress without uh, education. And all these activities need resources. Uh, our starting point are young people. You see them everywhere uh, calling for more action, uh, doing their part. But uh, usually they are totally under-resourced. They are working in this field. They are the, 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 they have their burnout because nobody gives them really money. And, uh, but with digital art, we think we are on a good way that we will find a new way to mobilize resources which we can then channel to use climate action and other things. So uh, uh, the governance is a key element. Uh, it will be transparent, inclusive and equitable with a, a digital identity management registry to document, verify and evaluate impact action which is then the basis also for our governance rights and some kind of reputation uh, management system and token model that rewards impact action via go governance tokens, action tokens and NFTs. And uh, we want to fulfill the potential of decentralized ecosystem and therefore ensure that all management and decision making is based on our governance tokenomics. Uh, the idea is also to frame it as a global commons uh, a mechanism or community where we bring in resources which are uh, essential for a climate safe future and with the understanding that we are co-owners of what we are contributing and building but of course there is an individual attribution which is then income generating and so that people can be there. Several ACE programs mentioned already in the, in the introduction, ACE Marketplace, Digital Art for Climate Platform and Marketplace, Education, Fundraising and Good Life Management. We've had uh, yesterday the uh, regional meeting of the Blockchain for Climate community in which we said we want to collaborate, we want players in the region to be leaders, uh, really uh, being uh, beacons of hope, uh, lighthouses for the world uh, in the run up to the next year's uh, climate conference here. And Aisha will tell us more about this. And uh, yeah, here are my contact details. And once again, thanks to Romy, who helped us on this uh, white paper draft significantly. And uh, with this, I give back to Christina. Thank you very much, Miroslav. Um, this is impressive because you can see the spectrum of potential um, that is offered by the technology and by the people who are engaged into the community and honestly I've been in the space for five years and uh, like I can't imagine five years ago a conversation like that that's such a complex way um, so um, thank you very much also for putting it in order in the presentation because I guess we need to start doing that in order to make you know things more simple and digestible in terms of engagement for others. Uh, so now we will be delving more into um, some of those things that Amiris have covered. Uh, and now one of the trendies um, 
things in crypto and blockchain uh, recently uh, were, of course, NFTs, non fungible tokens, and metaverse. And uh, I'm happy to invite uh, our next speaker, Rina Kagayar, uh, who is a metaverse growth leader at Unique Network NFT platform. Uh, We'll be talking about the platform as well as the digital art for climate and the potential of NFTs and metaverse for the climate action. Hi. Thank you, Christina. Uh, it's an honor, I'm humbled and honored to be today at this panel discussing such an important topic as uh, climate action and mobilization of resources. So one of the initiatives we uh, created together with Miroslav uh, almost already a year ago is digital art for climate. Uh, it's proven to be uh, very successful and had a lot of impact uh, in blockchain community as well as outside of blockchain community. And it, it is driving interest um, and participation from young people and from creative community to join climate action. Uh, so I'll begin with an introduction of what Unique Network is and why we uh, are confident that our solution is climate friendly. So Unique Network is a proof of stake scalable block blockchain for composable NFTs, a true third generation blockchain based on Polkadot and Kusama uh, technology. So the problem is uh, that uh, when NFT movement began, like we already have a climate issue and since 2013 the global ecological footprint per, per person uh, began decreasing, uh, which is good news, but we're still very far away from solving the solution. So introducing technologies that are energy consuming to solve climate action or to meet NFTs or create more transactions uh, on top of what we already have in the banking industry in other industries and all uh, productions is um, is not the way to go. So we need to use the technology that is clean. Uh, when NFT uh, emerged, uh, the only uh, possible platform was proof of work, mainly Ethereum, and you can see the impact of NFT art when one uses proof of work blockchains. And uh, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into the research, you can check Jean Yen Garcia's uh, website and research. He's a, a sustainable conscious artist who put a lot of effort into saving energy in his studio, being uh, extremely conscious of how much uh, energy he consumes. And then when he minted an NFT, he discovered that with that NFT, he consumed two years of energy. That he would normally consume in his studio doing like ordinary artwork. Uh, so that became a concern, and that from that point on, our blockchain community really began looking into the an impact and taking action. And luckily, we have uh, proof of stake blockchains. So now we have alternatives. We have platforms like Polkadot and many other proof of stake blockchains that do not. Uh, caused the damage of 48 kilograms of CO2 for one NFT transfer on Ethereum blockchain. So clean NFT and proof of stake, um, basically the difference is the consensus mechanism and the way the transactions are verified. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, now the paradigm shift is that we need to reduce energy consumption of NFTs by 99% and we can do it with proof of stake. However, one important note I want to say today is that proof of work blockchains have potential uh, and they actually have potential to change, to shift energy industry because uh, a, lot of, a lot of things are moving into the metaverse, virtual worlds, uh, into a, and proof of work is a, is a safe way to transfer data, it's transparent. So, um, it's a good technology uh, from the transparency and decentralization point of view. Uh, but it's not good from the climate point of view. And if we switch proof of work to sustainable energy sources, so we use solar power, wind power, uh, to, and all other renewable energy sources to power proof of work blockchains, uh, we can really trigger a tremendous revolution and switch to, to clean energy. Um, so, uh, Unique Network is proof of stake, as I mentioned. Uh, we'll get deeper in, in more details. 
So if we compare different proof of stake uh, blockchains with uh, including Ethereum 2.0, which is promised to uh, to be released very soon. Uh, if you look at Polkadot, so our underlying technology by the recent research, uh, the recent research showed that we are the cleanest and we consume the less CO2 by uh, the validating mechanism that we use on Polkadot. Uh, so, because we only use 30 layers and we have an optimization for NFTs. Uh, so some, some more data for you to compare uh, different POS functions. Uh, so, I'll quickly switch to our digital art for climate. Uh, yes, yeah, so we presented digital art for climate. Uh, it's a marketplace that which, and the concept is already developed by us, it's ready to go. Today, so we're preparing minting of these amazing artworks. We ran an art competition uh, from June last year until November 2021, and we presented the winners at the COP26. And I would like to show you this in a very short video. Um, if you could help me to press the play button, please. Right, so you can see, um, you can check digitalartforclimate.space website to see all the amazing artwork. We had more than 200 entries to the art competition. We have 30 finalists and <coughs> winners. Um, actually, on March 13th, our second place finalist was exhibited at the Burj Khalifa Park during the WOW Summit Festival curated by Christie's uh, curator. And uh, our finalists are making the name in the space as artists, they're very new, uh, their portfolio is very new. And uh, this is a great pleasure for us to see young talent uh, creating a name and also driving attention to climate action and to sustainability issues. And we're planning to run more of these art competitions on a regular basis and give voice to the youth uh, located all over the globe. People who would normally not have access to art galleries or auction houses now have the opportunity to submit their artwork, to showcase their artwork, and most importantly, um, sell it, fund themselves, and also help support climate action via digital art for climate um, platform. So please uh, visit digitalartforclimate.space website. Uh, and join our initiative. Uh, we are launching the platform and preparing for an auction. All the works will be auctioned off or um, sold. So join us in this movement and thank you, Marislav Kozi, for organizing this uh, initiative and Christina for joining us as a partner as well as uh, all our panelists today for supporting youth and for supporting climate action. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christina, and uh, really to say that uh, this initiative is very high potential. It resonates with uh, youth, uh, with the media, and um, UN Habitat the youth program, our main UN partner on this initiative, is really enthusiastic about it. And they say that they, uh, they are working with this uh, young artist in the informal settlement uh, of Matare in uh, Nairobi, and they have been able to give them a perspective that they can uh, connect with the world, they can show their art uh, to a global audience, and they can uh, receive financial uh, rewards. So we have given them a special recognition award, and uh, uh, as our aim is to get all of society engaged in climate action, we need this kind of tools. On the one hand, the, the social energy of art, and on the other hand, the tools uh, which make this connect the global connection with everyone around possible. And thanks once again, Unique Network is a great uh, tech partner for us. Well, let's say, uh, based on my experience in, in communications, like the more diversity you have uh, with the platforms you use, with the voices that you uh, transmit, the more, uh, well, the more engagement you, you achieve. So uh, art is one of this ways to engage more people into uh, important initiatives, and uh, it's it's incredible 
incredibly pleasurable to see how we can engage art together with the technology in order to uh, promote this uh, uh, this agenda. Um, let's get back to concrete actions. Um, uh, so um, another project that uh, was launched um, here at uh, the MENA Climate Week, uh, we had a working group yesterday, uh, Blockchain for Climate, uh, with a networking event uh, that actually within two hours uh, brought together some wonderful ideas. Um, and uh, I would like to invite our next uh, speaker uh, to talk more about uh, these ideas, and especially about people, because, well, in the end, the most important asset in any project is people uh, and our teams. So, Aisha Soda, who was coordinating this blockchain for climate potential uh, event yesterday, um, and would share with us some insights uh, that we gathered within those precious two hours. Thank you, Christina. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background about me, um, I'm the founder of a management consultancy which helps projects and companies grow. We specialise specifically on uh, disruptive technology, of which blockchain is part of that, sustainability and empowerment. Um, I'm also the regional manager for Impact Scope for the MENA region. Now when uh, Mira and I started talking about this a couple of months ago, about the COP28 presidency and what could be done in the region, um, it was perhaps a little bit light in terms of uh, how many players there were and the appetite, perhaps, on sustainability. And I think that uh, sustainability appetites depend on regional. So, for example, in Europe, for many, many years, we've been talking about a sustainability game. It's the same in the US, because obviously uh, in the US, you have tax breaks for being green. In the MENA region, because of the fact that, you know, especially here locally, um, there aren't those same incentives yet. Um, there is perhaps a bit less of an appetite. Um, so really working towards this pathway to the COP28 presidency, we started to discuss and brainstorm how we could engage the community locally, how we could engage different businesses, um, and actually create a very clear pathway to impact. And from our first discussion, we were, I think it was only two months ago, um, we've kind of seen a lot of different movements in the space, a lot of different players in the space. Um, so we kicked this off <coughs> very formally yesterday with this informal um, brainstorming or networking session where we actually created this workshop where people will come together and talk about actual pathways to impact. And um, definitely I think, I think that Dubai especially uh, is a huge hub for blockchain. Uh, it's a big hub for innovation and for, there's just so much potential around that as a result. Um, now in this space, um, there are more and more players who are looking at the proof of impact um, and how leveraging the blockchain technology specifically on proof of impact to actually create trust in the system. For example, Impact Scope is a carbon offsetting. Um, it creates a, a number of tools for carbon offsetting uh, for the blockchain um, industry and has the only real-time um, carbon assessment for mining operations, for example. Now, what that technology enables people to do is um, actually look at things and capture them in real time a lot quicker um, than any other technology that would, would Web 2 would have done. Um, so part of this, uh, this journey, I think, for us is really about creating an environment of people, um, first of all, who can uh, communicate very clearly what we're trying to achieve here, um, and they create very clear pathways to impact through different initiatives. So over the two hours yesterday, I think that there was a lot of energy in the room. We had, I think, about 25 different people. We're looking at five different work streams all coming together um, on how on very tangible impact. I think the biggest thing about creating trust, first of all, is to um, be able to capture things. And blockchain is, is one part of capturing impact, but actually how do we capture impact across the value chain? How do we actually capture impact across our journey? So the five different streams that we've established is digital art for climate, um, the DAO, uh, education, so we will be able to create an education platform and a way to educate people around us by clearly communicating what is blockchain and how is blockchain going to create environmental impact. Um, Mind what are the other two? We've got two more of them. The marketplace. The marketplace, which is going to be an aggregator, really, of people who are coming together um, in order to, to create this disruptive impact. Meta-COP. And 
and Metacop, exactly, exactly. Cop in the metaverse. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cop in the metaverse. So very five, very, very big initiatives, but um, five big initiatives with great vision um, that we are wanting to create very clear pathways to impact for. So how are we going to create um, steps along the way? How do we provide and produce results all the way through to create trust in the system that actually things are moving forward? And um, I think part of this dialogue is creating um, these very clear ways that you know, we can work with governments, we can take learnings from Europe, we can take learnings from um, different initiatives that have happened in the US and come together with this international audience who is engaged in creating actual tangible change and create that moving forward. Yeah. And if I may add uh, three points, one is that it's an open community, so we have set up Telegram channel, blockchain for as a digit uh, climate, uh, welcome everyone to join. Then the LinkedIn group, MENA, blockchain for uh, climate, uh, it's also listed on LinkedIn, everyone uh, welcome to join. Then I would like to uh, recognize also the great uh, leadership of Jane Thomason in this field. Uh, she is a blockchain uh, for impact uh, expert uh, from Australia, now living here in Dubai and uh, she was uh, very helpful in the initial phase already and also yesterday uh, to uh, connect people. She's also initiated a Blockchain for Impact meetup group here, so really Jane is following us uh, uh, via a webcast. And uh, the third point that I wanted to uh, mention in this context is that it uh, uh, was uh, the networking event was uh, uh, in connection with uh, official session here at the MENA Climate Week organized by UN Environment Program, uh, our organization IAI Blotcher and UN Economic and Social Commission for West Asia. And they've also recognized, uh, and they are very uh, partnership oriented, that uh, this topic, digital innovation, digital transformation, uh, is uh, the key uh, opportunity for the incoming presidencies to deliver to be effective and to be uh, special and uh, UN Environment, uh, UN Economic and Social Commission for West Asia and uh, UNFCCC, uh, Global Innovation Hub, uh, they have uh, all said that they will work with us on these topics and um, that's an important uh, context information to see. We are a trusted partner of the UN system, aligned with the process, uh, ACE and the digital innovation expertise. So. That's great. Actually, just to echo what you were saying, um, it is a completely open forum. The Blockchain for Impact group meets um, roughly every two weeks. Jane did set that up probably only, what, less than two months ago, and it's just been growing in terms of size, in terms of engagement, um, and it's, it's a very beautifully connected community um, who all just want to, to help towards creating some real impact. So if you're interested in joining that, please come, come and join along. And, if you're interested in actually uh, joining any of the five streams, we are happy to have the help and we're happy to be a very inclusive environment. Thank you very much, Alicia. Thank you, uh, Miroslav, uh, for also summarizing these important things. I would like also to highlight that uh, in this sort of discussions, um, the diversity is key. And actually, the centralized technology in itself is representing this idea of the centralized community. Uh, and you can see it here at the panel. Uh, that we are really searching for, seeking for diversity and inclusion in terms of ideas that are coming uh, on our plate and in terms of communities that we can engage. And this is very important. And uh, to this, in this regard, Dubai is really a very important place because now it's sort of a melting pot that, uh, that connects so many dots uh, and brings people from all around the world. Um, and, well, we are really blessed to have places like this um, in, in this not very simple uh, last couple of years uh, where we can uh, gather together and um, bring our visions from different locations in the world. Um, so, uh, with this being said, I would like to invite our next speaker, Caroline Uko, who will uh, tell us a little bit more about Climate action, climate empowerment in Kenya. Um, thank you. Uh, as I've been introduced by the moderator, my name is Karen. Uh, and I would like to really thank the organizers.
organizers and uh, particularly Miro for this opportunity to share a little bit about uh, uh, what we are doing in terms of action to climate empowerment. I'm from Kenya, uh, shared a, a little bit of some statistics for the context for people who don't know Kenya, I'm in East Africa. And uh, Kenya is a very, very unique country because um, we have the UN habitat and UNEP headquarters there. And also uh, the fact that uh, we are a trailblazer. Kenya has been able to do a lot in terms of climate uh, change and uh, particularly in terms of the regulatory framework. And with this, um, the main issue now remaining is how to call people to action. Action for climate empowerment has six pillars, as was shared by Miro. We have education, training, uh, public awareness, public participation, um, uh, public information, uh, and also the partnerships aspects. And it is with this that, uh, uh, particularly my interest is there, that we can make a difference if we have a platform like ACE to call people to action. And uh, this particular forum here is a uh, domicile on uh, such a platform to call people to change their behavior. We all know that um, during the COP26, we have the 10 year Glasgow Up program, which is also giving us an opportunity to have a, a, ten, a 10 year uh, action plan on how to call people to action. But uh, there are challenges uh, for ACE implementation, and uh, there are quite a number, but I want to just focus on capacity uh, the lack of capacity and uh, the issue of data and the issue of uh, innovation. For example, we are talking about the blockchain technology, we can make, which can make an actual difference. And uh, the fact that uh, the men are weak, and like the moderator has said, the North-South collaboration is uh, going to fertilize and make things better. And uh, also, uh, the fact that research has been done, and particularly in my country, Kenya, where the research has shown that community members should be involved in call to action, step by step, and uh, we, 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 we are aware of the public participation later, uh, which shows that it is a process. It's not a, a one-time thing. It is a journey, and I like my, the former speaker has talked about starting a pro process two months ago, and it's just going to get better and better, and at the end of the day, it will make a difference, because if you have a consistent process, then you're able to reach your vision. And uh, particularly for the South part, we know that the IPCC report, the EPS report, has focused on the urgency of call to action. And uh, I want to share with you that um, uh, the discussion here is particularly, particularly close to the heart of Kenyans because uh, in Kenya we have a very youthful population and you know digit of art for climate is uh, talking to the youth and it is making them take charge and uh, we know that ACE, you don't want to leave any kind of stakeholder behind. So uh, the interest for the DG for, for art and it's good that there are some projects in Madari there are other places in the country also, and that's why we will be working with Miro to partner and see where we can actually make a difference by engaging the youth using these innovative uh, ways and ensuring that they call, uh, the call to action is engaging everybody, and then when we change our behavior, then we will be able to reach the ambition. Lastly, uh, Kenya is known for being um, technology you know receptive country right now even microsoft is coming in to create a hub in lagos and nairobi there's a reason why because already if you're aware we had a very unique technology called the mpesa which has changed the world so this uh, blockchain technology <laughs> we are going to add <laughs> and make it even better and uh, uh, I'm very excited to be part of this panel, a panel of ladies with one gentleman. <laughs> and <laughs> we all know what ladies can do. Lastly, <laughs> uh, I just want to share that um, in terms of what can the AI, the and AI, AI do 
for us in Kenya is probably share the multi-stakeholder engagement networks that they already have. Assist in the resource mobilization, innovation. We work together, you know, and then uh, make a difference. However, we all know that uh, information only will not change, but it has to come from inside. So thank you so much, and uh, I look forward to the next case study, having a Kenyan uh, version. Thank you. It's really is exciting to see uh, how multi-dimensional strategies uh, are coming here in the way of the MENA Climate Week uh, and uh, how we, we bring ideas from different countries. We take ideas from Dubai, from people who are coming from other countries and this Babylonia, this melting pot is actually helping us looking at the world through the eyes of others and look at our world differently because we use different perspectives. So again, thank you very much. And uh, uh, again, highlighting the importance of diversity of visions, especially when we talk about global issues as, as climate change. Um, with this, um, I'm happy to introduce our last speaker. Um, who's coming from Japan? Yeah. And uh, Mari Marina Sada. We'll be talking about digital innovators, experts, and artists, uh, and climate action in Japan. Yeah, thank you. I'm really happy to be joining this conversation. Uh, my name is Mari Asada. Uh, I'm a visual artist based in Japan, and also I'm a part of uh, uh, NFT and Pinta Japan, which is um, um, now uh, 550 artists in Japan. Uh, and uh, I made a platform for support artists, just uh, uh, the COVID happened, so all this was suffering for uh, the event and all that. So I made a platform to support artists using NFT and DeFi um, staking uh, solutions. So the name is Artist Stake, stake for, Staking for Artists. So people uh, stake an uh, uh, directly artists to support artists. So you are going, going to artists. And uh, this is on Polygon now. I want to make it more. Uh, um, Multi uh, chain, and uh, I want to make the next action is for the climate action from by by artist action. So I'm thinking that, and and also I got involved. I get I get involved with the mother's project. Um, there's a lot about um, economy sustainability activists in Japan as well, and uh, we want to make mothers like visualization beautiful us and uh, make the metaverse and and with our uh, learn to earn solution in it so we can uh, learn about the climate action and sustainability and uh, make um, education there. And I'd like to connect all the, this uh, share there's um, uh, idea and we can collaborate. And uh, yes, uh, and I have our vision to visualize, uh, visualize uh, all the resources and uh, the season is matching to the, the problem and solution matching and uh, make solutions make it easy to solve uh, the problem in the world, around the world. So yes, uh, we have a uh, technology and cutting edge technologies as well as this uh, very uh, beautiful sweet mind. Um, yes, and also we have uh, music for stages uh, this is a musician, also artist, is very has sense to feel the earth. The, we need to the world to be beautiful, and we have a message. So we want to yeah, connect all over the world and send message with all the music, with music and art. I think that uh, uh, we can, uh, which we can do uh, as an artist action, yeah. and for climate. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Thank you very much. Uh, if I may add, uh, here, uh, we've had this first round of digital art for climate in the run up to COP26, uh, focusing on visual art. We've got uh, uh, digital art, uh, animations, photos of art, for instance, the mural in uh, Matare, uh, and uh, videos. And now, in this second uh, round of the competition that we are planning these days, we want to include also music. Uh, and uh, here 
also the connection with music for SDGs initiative. And um, uh, yeah, uh, as uh, uh, Marlene was uh, talking about, uh, Marlo was talking about uh, metaverse topics. I wanted to briefly mention also uh, from uh, last uh, yesterday's meeting and, and um, side event description for today. It's also written that the third uh, initiative that we will present is COP in the metaverse. And uh, this was something we've started at, in Glasgow. Irina said that uh, for me it was the first uh, person who brought it up. And, but other people said uh, it's uh, many people are talking about how can we uh, enable virtual participation in the UNFCCC process so that not uh, 40, 50,000 people travel with a high environmental footprint, but that we enable also virtual participation using these new technologies like uh, uh, metaverse uh, and uh, virtual reality or whatever. And uh, we have uh, here in our network, Blockchain for Climate, uh, MENA, network uh, that um, met yesterday partners from Slovenia, from uh, Slovenian hash uh, Tola uh, company and also the Ministry for in, uh, Economic Affairs and uh, uh, Emerging Technologies. They said that, that uh, they will, uh, they are planning anyway an uh, in, uh, international metaverse station like the uh, International Space Station uh, which will be a place where different metaverses come together and uh, in this context they will uh, provide special solutions for, uh, for us that we will uh, be able to provide space in the metaverse to countries and institutions, youth networks, youth initiatives to present themselves at the next COP. So, because uh, we have uh, at the COPs, uh, one thing are the negotiations. This is standard and it's boring. But uh, the big thing are the, the pavilions and the events. It's a big fair, it's the biggest climate party on earth. But uh, it's uh, very, access is limited. So, in, in, uh, people cannot afford, they don't have accreditation and whatever and we need all of society engaged. So we need to open up the space while uh, lowering the environmental footprint. And here uh, at the standard COPs you can uh, purchase um, space. And uh, at this, in Glasgow we've done this, we've got the space approved, but only for the space it would cost 100,000 uh, euros. The only thing you get is the space and the power uh, supply. And uh, then they, they sent us uh, nice layouts, everything nice, but this would add another 250,000 euros. And then at a certain point we said, okay, we think we cannot afford it. And uh, it's also the same for several uh, countries and so, which have their uh, interest to be presented with their needs, with their solutions, but they cannot afford it. And so we think uh, COP in the metaverse, this will be a new concept and we can help countries and other relevant stakeholders to be part of this uh, biggest climate uh, party uh, in the coming years and uh, working on it and we have good partners and... Uh, if, if I may add one thing, uh, Metaverse is really one space, it's a unified space and it's about inclusion. Yeah. And if we want to take action towards sustainable development goals, climate action, we need to do it all together. Everybody should be included. So we cannot continue with exclusive spaces where only governments take decisions. We need to include every single citizen. Because only at the point where each and every one of us understands the importance of this situation we're living in, the importance of taking action towards improving our climate condition becoming more sustainable, consuming less CO2. Everybody will take action because we need to have tangible contribution, tangible way for people to contribute and really feel that they have a voice, they, their action makes a difference, and then we need to bring everybody together in order to make this difference all together. So the metaverse, the new digital economy, new crypto economy, it will power everyone. The goal is to empower every single creator, individual, 
with cryptocurrencies, with blockchain technology, make it all accessible and transparent. And this is the goal, and we're calling all partners and also in the blockchain space. Our aim is to be multi-chain, our aim is to connect other blockchains and create Web3 internet, new generation, more inclusive, where citizens have power, ownership of their data, of management of their information, and management of their economic resources. I think that's a really, really great point, um, and I think a pathway to do that is going to be through education as well. Absolutely. So um, not just through, say, um, it's about simplifying and demystifying <coughs> the entire process. Actually, if you speak to most people in the blockchain industry locally or, or around, nobody really knows what COP is. Yes. Right? Uh, um, they also don't understand how sustainability and blockchain go together because the first assumption is about the carbon footprint of blockchain. In a second, how does blockchain have sustainability? So just being able to actually, you know, talk about how they all relate together. What is COP? What is the Paris Agreement? What is blockchain? How does it offset? How does it help? I think just being able to demystify all of these very, very commonly used terms and all of these acronyms that are used very loosely and freely is just, it, I think it's the first step in creating these pathways to impact. And then we can look to create a more inclusive and exclusive, uh, inclusive society, sorry, very inclusive. Um, and then we can all start to create change together. But I think until people really understand what any of these things mean, people are kind of standing in the dark. You know? <laughs> also, it is from the platform perspective, it is very important to make technology simple and accessible. We still have some um, challenges in terms of opening wallets, uh, and we are working on improving this day to day uh, in making it one simple button so people don't have to do crypto gymnastics and deal with all the complexities of the blockchain. So for the end user, it is uh, very simple to understand. Uh, you know, no, no need to know blockchain from the inside, uh, but they could simply use uh, blockchain powered platforms like they use Web2 Internet. So Web2 experience into Web3 is our model. David, from the communication perspective, I would like to highlight that even though in terms of climate action it's very important to talk about uh, negative things that we need to solve because there is very little time, in terms of blockchain for climate, I think it's really important to highlight positive developments. Uh, and uh, we at Quintel are actually trying to uh, transform the narrative. Um, we were doing this to demonstrate that uh, talking about cryptocurrencies as a sort of a crime, uh, uh, crime money is, is not efficient at all because, well, crime criminals will use any money they can find. It's not about cryptocurrencies or dollars or any other currency. Um, and now we are actually trying to bring this new narrative and dissipate myths about uh, blockchains being uh, not green. Um, of course, there, are, there is a great potential to, uh, to increase uh, um, the green, uh, the green uh, uh, power of blockchains. And of course, there is a long path uh, along our ways. But uh, I really would like to highlight that all these wonderful projects are doing a great job and they are trying to be the best in the field and to make the biggest impact. And this is what this new blockchain community is about. And it's very important to highlight every positive step that we are doing uh, and focus on positive things because also positive thinking <laughs> is something that will inspire us going forward. Um, so thank you very much for iterating different ways of doing that. And again, summarizing, it's very important to engage as many different uh, communities, as many different sectors, as many different platforms to, tr to, to transmit our messages. Uh, we are talking about uh, events, we are talking about metaverse, we are talking about communicational platforms, we are talking about educational platforms, we are talking about different regions, we are talking about being always open 360 uh, degrees uh, to all everything that is happening around us. Uh, and uh, thank you again, the organizers, for bringing us all together here, because this is a, a very important uh, opportunity for us also to, uh, to look at the others, but also at ourselves um, through the eyes um, of other wonderful people. Uh, for the closing remarks, I would also like to see if anyone in the audience would like to share their thoughts
uh, and their highlights of this broad spectrum of uh, initiatives and uh, opportunities that blockchain is bringing uh, for the climate action community. Um, did anyone? Did you join? Uh, you Please. can take the microphone there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that it's on the stream as well. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, just a few brief words. Um, very inspired by all the speakers here this evening, and also very inspired to see so many women also involved in the space. It's been a long time coming, and um, we're seeing that uh, more and more these days, and in the MENA region of all. So, very exciting times. Um, I'm passionate about renewable energy, um, and that the distributed nature of energy in the renewable space is also very aligned to the distributed nature of blockchain and DLT technology. So, just a, a brief um, inspirational note for me, and thank you. Thank you very much. My very, very last question to you, a very brief one. Um, can you imagine this convergence of blockchain and climate action in one word? Uh, I had a association today with the rainbow because rainbow is something that is actually uh, engaging all the available colors so it, it's about uh, it's about diversity and it's about bridging bridging different um, parts of of the environment um, so my word is rainbow what about yeah. you Marie? rainbow I like um, we have a rainbow in Japan as well rainbow um, also it's different, um, and uh, yeah, but I like the rainbow. <laughs> I have rainbow. Something else related to the blockchain potential for the climate action? Uh, okay. I would say in sight, in sight, because um, the impact it's going to have 10, 20 years later, cannot be seen now, but we will, it is very insightful. It, it's a vision, we are going to find. Awesome, Aisha, opportunity. There is so much opportunity to change the world with blockchain in so many different ways. It's so exciting. Awesome. Irina, unification, because we need multiple stakeholders, multiple people to build metaverse. We need blockchain, we need VR, we need AI, we need developers, we need companies, we need individuals, we need creators to get together <coughs> to make a change. There is some. Mine is community. Because in the light of global challenges, we are the community. And we have to learn to function as a global community, as a global family, having also our future generations in mind. They are also part of our community, and we are destroying our Mother Earth uh, planet. Uh, and uh, so we have to function better. <laughs> I just say Mother Earth and open Earth, open universe. Awesome. Yes. Yes. So, uh, unification of the communities through opportunities, in special opportunities um, through uh, an open light rainbow. <laughs> 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 thank okay. you very much for, for being with us today. Thank you very much for the organizers. And uh, thank you, my wonderful co panelists, and everyone who is watching us and also has contributed to the initiatives that we've been talking about. Uh, let's move forward. Let's fly, as Marislav <laughs> mentioned yesterday, and uh, let's make this world better. Thank you very much. Let's make a group photo. Yeah. Maybe you should join us on the other side as well. It's in we have a profession. Uh, uh, where will these photos be? Yeah. Can we uh, find them <laughs> also somewhere? <laughs> yeah, I think. Perhaps we stand down or up? Maybe better up. Okay. Maybe uh, up. Because uh, then you have the screen. No, maybe we can maybe. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can we sit down? Yeah. 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 Switch the screen, maybe? Can you turn it off? Uh, no. No, okay. It's fine. Okay, fine. Otherwise, you get a dumb kid. That's better than that. I feel better. Do you want to go in the middle then? Yes, sure. Yeah. But there's one just with you, and then I'll jump. I would think the chair would be. I don't know. 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 I don't
Just first one with yeah. them and then I'll jump on. <laughs> it's mine. No more. No more. No more. Yes, do it. Thank you.